I hope you can see my screen clearly. Yes, we can see your screen. And you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. I, I want to apologize for this slight. Um, this lecture is supposed to come up um, just before the format that we just had from um, uh, Mary Ann Ibu. And um, I, I will be taking it very fast. Uh, but sorry, I have several images here on my slide. And I also want to thank um, the organizers of this program, IPEM, NAMP, everybody from Africa, you are indeed great. I, I will want, uh, my name is Omo Jola Akintayo Daniel, um, medical physicist in um, um, Department of Radiology, Medical Physics Unit, Federal Medical Center, Saba in Nigeria. So uh, the topic today, I will be, I'll be looking at radiation detection and measurement. Radiation detection and measurement. And now I, I want to start by saying that um, we all understand the principle of um, um, one of Albert Easton's um, theory. And um, one of his theories said, um, I quote, all laws of physics are the same in all inertial frame of reference. And um, generally when we move from one imaging um, device to another, the laws of physics are actually the same in all inertial frame of reference. Now I have a few table of content. Um, what, is what is radiation? This time around we want to look at ionizing radiation. We also have non-ionizing radiation. What are radiation detectors? Types of radiation detectors. Measurement with these detectors and possibly we try to look at the application of this detector um, all around us. So um, I hope you can hear me clearly. Can I hear? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Yes, we okay. can hear you, please. Good. So what is radiation? Radiation is the energy that comes from a source and travels and travels through space and may be able to penetrate various material. So uh, materials like light, radio, light wave, radio wave, and microwave are types of radiation that are called non-ionizing. So they cannot actually ionize matter. So they are non-ionizing. So we, we likely see excitation. And um, the, the kind of radiation discussed in this document is called ionizing radiation because it can pro produce charged particles called ions in matter. Now, I would like to make a clarification here that um, under radiation detection, a simple law plays all through ability to produce charged particles, charged ion, electrons, and positrons. Now, we can from there get images through several programming languages, through Fourier, Laplace, transform, um, through whichever means. And then we can also quantify them in terms of uh, measurement, um, in terms of numbers. So, um, um, production of charged particles, it is the main bane of most radiation detectors. So once charged particles can be produced, you can be sure that radiation can be measured, images can be gotten. So I, I think um, 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 yesterday, Prof shared something like this, and my other colleagues have also, also shared something like this. Um, we are particularly about this area, this red area, X-ray and gamma ray. Now we will discover that these particles are actually they are having shorter wavelength, higher frequency, and higher energy. And um, if you try to look at the other side, we are going to see longer wavelength, lower frequency, and lower energy. And, and that is this try to tell tell us that um, you can be in a state and you can be hearing another radio station far away because of the wavelength, very long. Now, but in this area, we have a very short wavelength because the further you move away from a radiation source, the lower the dose. Now, our focus on this, on the X-ray and gamma, our focus will be on X-ray and gamma ray 
from EM spectrum. I, I try to just bring out a few devices. Um, on this side is a LINAC that primarily uses X-ray, high energy X-ray. Here is a cobalt primarily using gamma ray. Here is a CM, CM X-ray, it's an X-ray. And here is a CT, it's also an X-ray. Now, I, I just took this image uh, from the other lecture. She was trying to show us um, how an X-ray generator looks like. We are going to see it more clearly. Now, the reason why I'm putting all of this is for us to understand the slide better when we get to radiation detection and measurement. And um, this area is actually where the X-ray comes out. And these are generators. This is ceiling-mounted DR X-ray unit. Now, this is what you see on the generator. Quite quite um, um, sophisticated. These are our anode and cathode. Yes, I didn't clarify them here, but one of them is our anode, the other is our cathode on this transformer. Now, it's a step-up transformer. Uh, yes, in my country, we, we, we operate on 230 volts. Now, we, we want to raise this to about 150,000 volts. Quite remarkable. And these are other ICs. Of, of the X-ray um, generator. Now we, we can see down here an X-ray tube here. And um, um, to allay our fears, most times when we see the diagram of an X-ray tube, we, we, we feel the cathode is far and the anode is um, quite far. No, they are not. Where I have this red ink is actually our tungsten. Our tungsten is just very close. Remember we are saying very short wavelength. So it's as short as possible. So they are close and they are twined together. We have the anode and um, the anode is tungsten. And then we have the cathode, the cathode filament where electrons move towards uh, the anode. And um, um, the next slide. So what are radiation detectors? So radiation detectors are special systems which measure the amount or number of ionization and excit excitation events that occur within the detector's sensitive volume. So now there is a sensitive volume through which measurement is going to be made. So a radiation detector system can either be passive or active, depending upon the device and the mechanism used to determine the number of ionization. So we, we are going to look at some of these detectors are actually passive, meaning that it has a mechanism for, for trapping these um, ions, for trapping them somewhere, and then we use, we use, we, 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 we either heat them up or do something and, and, and they are free. So we can now do counting now. So active, you get your results immediately, just immediately. So types of radiation detectors. We have radiation dosimeters. We have gas field radiation detectors, scintillation detectors. And um, I think lastly, I'm going to add um, semiconductor um, um, detectors. Sorry, it's not here. So um, one, one of the first type of um, radiation um, um, dosimeter we use is radiographic films, which we call film badges. Um, um, right from the advent of the introduction of um, photographic films, Exactly, it's just like the photographic film. It is one of the oldest method of dose measurement. The film badge employs one or, or, or several dental sized pieces of photogra uh, photographic film held in a special order. One film generally has a sensitive emotion and the other a relatively insensitive emotion layer. Radiation is absorbed by the emotion layer and can be correlated to the optical density after development using a processor. Now, this is actually what we see. This is a processed film. You can see the shades of um, the gray scale on the film, dark areas, um, gray areas, and, and it has to do with um, how um, um, radiation is incident on those areas. And um, from this area, you are going to see um, this is practically used in the dental department. Go for the dental x-ray. Um, this will be placed inside your mouth. 
using an um, 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 intraoral x-ray unit. So it's one of the simplest units in that area. So these are also filters. Filters are actually attached um, in order for you to, um, um, you know, when there's a filter blocking, um, if a filter is used, you, um, there's, there's stoppage. You can have stoppage of X-ray. So the, the intensity varies with the um, filters you are going to use. Down here is an unprocessed exposed film. Now, I have actually removed it from this point. I actually removed it from here. So this is how the color looks like. An unexposed, I mean, unprocessed exposed film. And now this is um, um, how it looks like. Um, you can see cadmium. Cadmium is a bit thicker. Uh, copper is relative. Aluminium is small. And then this window is quite empty here. This window is quite empty. So you should expect that um, the filter will help to differentiate and quantify the energy of the X-ray. So if we're exposing with about um, 70 um, kV, you should expect that attenuation, attenuation here, the cardium is going to attenuate more of the beam. So we have, um, we have um, let us say, a little amount of radiation emanating out here. Um, for this copper, you have more coming in because the thickness is not as high as this and in that order. So uh, we actually use this for photographic films. Um, uh, the next one I want to talk about is radiation dosimeters. In, um, I want to talk about dichromic films. I, I don't know whether you have heard of that before. We also call it gaffchromic. They are, they are gaffchromic in nature. They contain colorless dye that becomes blue after exposure because of radiation-induced polymerization. So this process does not require film processing like other photographic films. It is used in the area of radiation dosimetry. You, you see that we, we quite use them so much in radiotherapy and other areas. So that, uh, that, this is an image of how a radiochromic film looks like. Yellowish in color, and then you can see the blue areas where there, are, um, there is um, um, radiation. Now, these areas in red have been exposed to radiation. So we, we practically use a scanner to, uh, um, do, uh, to process our result in this case. The next I want to talk about is thermoluminescence dosimeter. This is quite common and um, it is readily available everywhere. Um, is the phenomenon by which certain crystals are able to store energy. They're able to store energy transmitted to them by radiation and then emit this energy in the form of visible light when heated. I, 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 I want to be sure that you can all hear me. Can somebody answer? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, we can. Fantastic, yes. fantastic, fantastic. So we have types of um, um, TLDs. Um, the first one is most common, lithium fluoride doped with magnesium and titanium. Now your lithium is actually um, neutral abundance. We have what we call neutral abundance of lithium. We also have um, enriched lithium, which we call um, Li7, Li6. They are all enriched lithium. And um, um, we, we practically use the first um, lithium fluoride doped with magnesium and titanium for quite a large range. Radiation protection, environmental monitoring, and clinical dosimetry. Now, we also have lithium fluoride doped with magnesium and copper and um, also phosphorus. Uh, it's 30 times more sensitive to gamma X-rays than the MTSN. The MTSN is the same thing as the lithium fluoride doped with magnesium and titanium, just like the first one. Um, the end there is neutral abundance. Also good for environmental monitoring and personal dosimetry. Uh, we, we have a range of them. The family of lithium, um, the family of um, aluminum. Um, this time around, they are also called optically stimulated dosimeters. We also have the family of calcium. So they are all practically used for dosimetry. But yes, they actually have some advantages. 
Lithium fluoride group to magnesium and titanium is actually tissue equivalent. So most times we use it for uh, patient dose audits. So we can actually use that. If you want to um, um, find out what your reference dose guideline is for a, a particular facility now, you can also use um, um, lithium fluoride doped in magnesium and titanium because it is tissue equivalent. Um, you, when you take an x-ray, you don't practically see the um, TLD there. So um, this is uh, the physics aspect of um, 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 TLD and um, school physics um, in your part one or your part two or your part three, you would have seen something like this. Your, your trapped um, electrons, your, your holes, and um, your, your valence band moving to your conducting band, and it's, it's just physics, just physics. So these are dosimeters. I actually took this in my facility. Um, this is a dish that contains 120 chips. You can see them in the, um, on the tray. And um, these are different types, quite large. We have them, we have them in powdery form, in square, in, 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 in round, in, in cubes, quite large. So I practically had to take this from uh, our facility. Uh, this is a va vacuum squeezer I used in picking this chip. From here, you can actually see the thickness of the chip and um, you can appreciate it more better. So this is lithium fluoride doped with magnesium and titanium. This is also the same. Uh, this is another type. Uh, you can appreciate them all better. And um, at the rear end here, you can see when I'm, I'm trying to load them on a TLD reader there for um, readouts. So we quickly move to gas field radiation detectors. I, I hope I'm not too fast. Um, gas field radiation detectors. Um, the only requirement for radiation detection by this type of detector is that the radiation must have enough energy to penetrate the walls of the detector tube and create ion pairs in the gas. So the most common type types of gas field um, radiation um, uh, radi um, radiation sovimeters are the ion chamber, the proportional counter, and the gigamolar counter. I think that is quite um, very clear for us. So this is just um, a, a diagram whereby um, this area is actually the most sensitive area. Once radiation comes into this place, there is production of ion pairs. You can see the negative charge and the posit positive charge. Now from this area, you can, there could be a readout. There could be a readout through some few manipulation you, you could get a, 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 a radar. So radiation enters the sensitive volume of the detector and, ion, and ionizes the gas molecule. So the electron part of the ion is attracted to the positively charged central wire where the entire, when the, where, where it enters the electric circuit. So the meter then shows this flow of electrons. So it's quite um, easy. So I, I want to show you um, an ion chamber. So this is an IBA ion chamber, a DCT um, 100 millimeter ion chamber. When I talk about the length, the length from here down here, and then it has a sensitive area here. We have the sensitive volume. Um, you can actually use this quite expensive um, for um, dose measurement. We, we, we usually use this for um, dose measurements for CTDI. You know, you want to get your your, um, 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 you want to get your dose output using your 16 centimeter um, 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 phantom um, and your um, 32 centimeter um, um, phantom. You want to get those at um, 12, at three, at six, at nine. So we can actually use this for dose measurement. And um, um, I quickly move to proportional counter. Um, it's, um, it, um, it uses the principle above here. You can see the tin window. You can see the ionization of the argon gas here. And um, it's just purely ionization. So once ionization can take place, charges can be collected. Now these charges can be converted into numerical values. They can be converted into numerical values. So this is an example of a proportional counter. And um, most times they, they are a bit bulky and 
you don't often see them. So I, um, this is a gigamola counter, um, very straightforward. Um, you can see, you can actually measure in count per minute. Uh, this is the sensitive area. This is a sensitive area, as you can see, you can measure in millirugen per hour, microsieviet per hour, count per minute, count per seconds. So you can do a range of measurements using this gigamolar. Same thing, there's ionization. Charges are collected and they are displayed in form of numbers. So I have a range of them. Uh, we have, um, 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 it's also displayed in millirugen per hour. This is it, millirogen per hour. And um, this is another type of um, re, um, 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 meter that can also measure in microsieviet uh, um, in terms of um, um, equivalent dose. And um, we can also measure in uh, dose rate. So you can get full range of that. So we quickly look at scintillators um, now. Um, scintillation is a process by which energy, energy deposited by ionizing radiation is absorbed and converted to light. So there is a conversion to light. There are many uh, types of scintillators um, ranging from organic crystals and um, inorganic crystals. So common to us are um, the sodium iodide uh, uh, doped with um, thallium and we have xenon, we have helium gas. So this is the principle of operation, quite dramatic. A whole lot of physics here. You would have seen this in your solid state, um, uh, possibly we'll get there, a bit in your solid state physics. Now we have X-ray incident on the scintillator. Now the scintillator has the capacity, the strength to give out light. And this is just light. Now the light goes through a photo detector. Now I have drawn here, this is a photo detector. The photo detector um, is actually to help us to convert this light to electrical signal. Quite amazing. I, 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 I use the DR system here for that. Um, one of our DR system, if you have heard of a flat panel system here, you can clearly see, sorry, let me move my cursor here. So this, is a flat panel detector. And on this detector, uh, we have that, this diagram you have seen, the scintillator and the photo detector. So you can actually use this. Um, 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 this is a collimator head. Um, radiation emanates from here, comes out here. Once I push this in, you can actually make measurements. And um, in current DR system, um, the flat panel system is so important that you, you can use that to quantify um, your, your output because most times um, in darkroom process, in darkroom process, it's, um, when your image is very dark, you, you should know that your factors are very high. So, but in, in DR system, you don't really know. So we have what we call the current AXI to actually help us measures um those incidents on this flat panel system and now for different manufacturers we have different um, um values for you to know if um, um your output is optimal or you have over or, uh, overexposed the patient or you have underexposed the patient so i move again to uh, a fluoroscopy system. So I, I, I don't know, man, may, maybe when many of you have seen this system before. This is a fluoroscopy system. Um, we, we can have them as mini uh, um, CM systems. And usually they, we use them for interventional um, 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 studies. Uh, perhaps um, you, 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 you want to do some, um, for a patient that wants, that wants to do hip replacement or femoral, um, you, 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 you want to, you, you want to work on the femur, you want to work on the tibia, the fibula, you want to work on any part of the body. So it's an image guided process. So this is actually having the X-ray generator and um, the X-ray tube, this X-ray tube is the same thing as this here. Um, 
we have our um the table yes this is our table we have the patient the patient is supposed to be here now we have our grid before the image intensifier the grid is to help us um remove lower energy because most times it's an x-ray and um um, um photons are not um uniform like in a gamma um graph which where energy is quite uniform um so these are not quite uniform so you have to um use a grid here now we have an intensifier image intensifier your image intensifier has an output phosphor now your output phosphor is what actually does the light amplification you can see the output for phosphor is within this system and and you can actually use that uh, there's a whole lot of light amplification and then um, this time around you, you 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 can actually use a very low dose i mean a very low factor to actually get significant um, 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 image on your screen practically my center if if you are just um i'm doing what we call k wiring i don't know what, what, whether you know about that k wiring has to do it perhaps you are working on the uh, uh a broken um, arm and um, you you want to try to fix them together and fixing some wires into the hand um you you, you practically use about 43 kv kv 43 kv is just enough four mas quite low why because of your output first uh, your output phosphor which does the light amplification yeah this is another unit we call the spect imaging that also um uses the um um the the this crystal here you appreciate it better here it uses this crystal and um sodium iodide um for and um, i remember uh our first um um uh, uh one of our resource persons from the uk talked about this a bit and you can actually see the patient is injected with a radionuclide a uh, possible technetium um, 99 metastable now we have this gamma camera closer to the patient picking gamma rays you have your collimator and this does the light amplification and there is a whole lot of computer manipulation and you can see images here so you can actually use these systems also to measure um those and those rate because just like i've said um the same um device that can convert signals into images can also convert them into numbers and you can actually get significant results from there i will try to look at semiconductor devices and um, um it's quite um semiconductor device is quite um, um, um for us that did um, solid state physics I, I know you are going to remember your bravia lactis your um three two one is it three two two one where you draw your bravia lactis and then um, you try to yes is they are all semiconductor devices uh practically i have an image of a semiconductor device um which i use um for measurement of those those rates ma mas several parameters so it's quite amazing now this depletion layer is actually where there is reionization reionization takes place here and then there is you can actually get your you can actually get your dose from here you can actually get your parameters from here so i'm i, I know i'm quite running out of time i have to just um, hang it up here thank you very much i i, I don't know if there are questions if there are questions, you can do well to ask me questions. I'm ready for that. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Omojola.